Thank you. All right, everybody. Look at us go. You've got a big smile on my face and on the beautiful, wonderful Dr. Aaron Hawkins' face as well because we've been very straight-laced and very, very um, professional in this last uh, pre-interview <laughs> session. So, uh, Aaron, thank you so much for being here. We've obviously progressed a long way since you first were involved with the Innate Summit back in 2015. Now we've got webinars and a whole bunch of cool, fun stuff. So thank you for saying yes to speak and for being on this webinar. It's my absolute pleasure, Sammy. I feel like the Innate Summit has gone full pro since I first became involved with it. Um, and it's a pleasure oh, to be here, always. Well, thank you for saying yes. And those that don't know, Dr. Erin is a legend. When we first mentioned to her in 2014, or maybe you're 14, hey, we might come out to Australia, we might run a seminar, we're just going to run off the back of um, Inner Winners. Would you mind getting on stage? And her face went ghostly white, pretty much as white as my shirt and her shirt. And he was just kind of a little bit like, uh, no. And then now she's a full on boss chick living the world and doing some pretty cool things. So your evolution has been pretty exciting. Do you mind, can we start there and tell us a bit about you and, and basically the birth of, of Dr. Aaron Hawthorne? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Aaron Hawthorne. Uh, so Dr. Aaron Hawthorne was born on the stage at Innate Summit, the very first Innate right. Summit. Um, yeah. <laughs> she literally was because she was, uh, she still is very introverted and actually quite a shy person, even though most people wouldn't believe that. I find it extremely challenging to stand up there and to speak on stage. And, but I never really realized how much until I did it for the first time and literally died. Um, so then I was reborn from that moment and it became a calling, I guess, to say yes to speaking events, which challenged me hugely, but helped in my development of myself. Um, and also, I guess, uh, my journey from that point on. Um, how far do you want me to go into this, Sammy? Oh, I think it's a pretty cool one. I'm going to make, come back to that. But definitely, like, yes, you started there. But can you tell us a bit of maybe I'll, I might lead into with, with a little bit. Those who don't know, Aaron, um, we spent some time with Gabby and myself in Italy, obviously, as you, a lot of you know. And we we're going to all the Cairo Europe seminars with Mark Hudson and we'd always kind of hang out with Aaron at the bar and have a bit of fun. And two or oh, maybe four or five Aussies that was in Europe, hanging out, enjoying these seminars, but we started realizing how good it would be to have this philosophy, this vibe, this family in Australia, when we're going through all the crap of, you know, you couldn't take x-rays or kids and adjustments and neck adjustments and all this crap. We kept saying, man, how bad is Australia? So that was kind of the birth of, I suppose, our relationship back then. And then to see you do amazing things, you started as an associate, you're doing an associateship in Amsterdam, yeah. and then you kind of you know, knew you worked for the VAGs in, in WA. You've always been an amazing chiropractor with huge philosophy. But then the birth of that into where you are right now, maybe can you kind of elaborate a bit more on that story? Sure. So the NA Summit was literally the way from one version of Erin into the other. Um, I always felt quite strong in my philosophy, but I was very shy. I had not a lot of confidence in myself or in my um, ability to succeed in practice. I always did pretty good, um, but I was absolutely terrified. The idea of having my own business or my own practice was terrifying. So I actually worked as an associate for 10 years <laughs> before I built up enough courage to open my own practice. And it was the Innate Summit and Cairo Europe that kind of pushed me into that. Um, I then built my practice in Sydney, Live Love Life, which was a wonderful experience and helped again to challenge me and, and open me. And of course, I spoke about my journey a bit at each of the Innate Summits along the way through there. Um, what a lot of people don't know is at the same point in time, um, I started another business in Europe. Uh, I had a girlfriend. She actually was my CA when I was practicing in Amsterdam. We became quite good friends. <laughs> and um, she came to visit me in Australia and right around the time when I opened my first practice and she was for hours and hours and hours in my bathroom one day to the point where I thought, oh, my goodness, she's actually gotten lost in there. Um, and finally she came out and she said, OK, so I've tried everything on in your bathroom, including your deodorant. And I just have one question. Is it all really natural? And I was like, yeah, of course, like you know me, I'm a chiropractor, I'm a naturalist, that's how I live my life. And she was like, oh, but it's all so nice. I said, yeah, yeah, this is what I was telling you, you can't get this stuff in the Netherlands. And she said, that's it, 
we're going to take it to the Netherlands. And so from that moment, we actually started a business in the Netherlands and now we sell throughout Europe, um, importing and distributing Australian natural skincare brands, lifestyle brands, uh, makeup brands, personal care brands. Um, and over the past five, nearly six years now, um, we built that business into a seven figure business. We stock nearly 50 brands and we have developed two brands of our own. Um, and <laughs> it's been a tremendous <laughs> amount of work for a long time. It was me in Sydney and my business partner Floor in the Netherlands and we would work opposite time zones. I would work throughout the night to be online with Europe and then I would go into the studio to practice uh, and serve my people during the day. During COVID, my practice was very busy. Um, and then also my other business in the Netherlands was extremely busy and it got to the point where I was sleeping three, maybe four hours a night and it was time to kind of put my focus and energy into one area and that's when I actually decided to step away. I sold my practice in Sydney and I went to the Netherlands and I've been in Europe for the past two years and I'm just back in Sydney now. That um, is, it is such a cool story <laughs> and I know this, you did a very good job in summarising that and I know how much heartache there was involved and but also like you weren't afraid of hustling, that's for sure. Like you were doing some serious work, some serious hours. And even the funny thing was when I mentioned to you about the Unite Summit, you're like, Sam, what can I do to help? And I was like, Aaron, you've got enough on your plate. You're not going to help me at all this year. Don't worry about it. But um, the, the coolest thing is, hey, that Lozzy, is that okay up there? Um, uh, yeah, I'm just so impressed with the fact that, you know, you've done so much stuff and uh it's just out of control and I can't wait to hear even more of your journey and more of your story this year. So tell me, how is it going now? And maybe you said that you, the next one was one of the births of that and also the uh, Cairo Europe, but how has the philosophy or how has, I suppose, you and the development and the foundations of Erin been a key factor in you doing that and developing this seven figure company and going gangbusters because I know you've got multiple staff. You're also, one time I rang you saying you're doing some kind of testing and I don't know, in some science laboratory learning how to do, I don't know, split some chemical or whatever the hell you do, not chemicals, but some kind of thing. Yeah. So like, you've done some pretty amazing things. It's been, I tell you what, I sometimes look at this. This is a life that I never thought I would ever live in a million years. I never saw myself being this person. But I'm, I mean, a few different things happen. Number one is, um, and it always comes back to self um, and sense of self and confidence in yourself. But having confidence in yourself is knowing what you stand for, knowing who you are, knowing where your values sit and knowing where your philosophy is aligned. And the Innate Summit and Cairo Europe were two huge, huge events in my life to be able to solidify that and to really anchor in that for me. Um, and that's where a lot of my confidence to be able to do these other things came from, you know, knowing how I see the world, knowing that I am a naturalist, knowing that I believe in the body's ability to guide itself, but knowing it's also connected to a current that we're all connected through throughout mm. the universe as well. Um, and, and ultimately, you know, my business partner, Floor, she was a CA for nearly eight years as well. She's actually more of a chiropractor than most chiropractors <laughs> that I know. Um, and we kind of run our business from the same philosophy. And that's, that's that philosophy of innate intelligence and universal intelligence. You know, when there's, tr when there's difficulty, when we're having difficulty making decisions, we can't see a clear road ahead of us. We sit down together and we tune in and, and she says to me, what's your innate telling you? Like, oh, wow what what can we connect to that's inside like let's turn our head off for a moment because there's always like oh but spreadsheets and cash flow and money and supply chain issues and shipping and regulations and there's always that in any any industry but that actually is just stuff that sits on the outside it's not actually what guides you forward and it's not what leads you to success or to failure so when we've we've had major breakthrough is when we've sat down together and really been able to connect like okay so what's our innate telling us not our educated brain but our innate what are we feeling and where are we getting signs in the universe that we're meant to take this now and that's how we've kind of moved forward in our business that's how we've always kind of worked in our relationship and and with our team and and um and making those big decisions and 
that's kind of become a lens and a filter that's present throughout my life. Um, wow. And that's how I make all the decisions in my life. Um, just imagine, and, I, this just, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off there, Aaron, but like I just, no, please. We, we hear so many young young chiropractors coming into the world and they're not, they're a bit lost. And is it the art? Is it the science? Is it the philosophy? But what I really loved about what you said then is when Aaron found the true essence and the certainty and you found your own foundationary strength, that's what allowed you to then to rest into the philosophy and almost have this complete faith in, you know, I kind of expect it, but then also you, could you imagine as a, as a, a leader in the industry, imagine if we had multiple CEOs and, and business entrepreneurs and like top level, like seven figure industries with the bosses that were saying, Hey, what does your innate tell you? Turn your brain off. And let's just kind of trust in this kind of the global current of energy. Like imagine if we had the ice cream shops and then Coles Meyer and then BHP. I mean, imagine if we had more and more big industries that were all focusing on this, that would literally be so far reaching as BJ mentioned, because the philosophy is the philosophy and it's the principle of pretty much our existence. And I just love the fact that you're doing that in a very much a left brain world because I didn't even think of supply chains and freaking ordering and all that stuff. That's not part of the Cairo world, but like how cool you can actually really make a vitalistic company be born through the vision and the philosophy of chiropractic, but it's nowhere near a chiropractic product, which is fucking brilliant. And, and that's the thing that I, re I think that I really realized it's not just a chiropractic philosophy. It's a philosophy of life. And the more I, um, have interactions with other businesses, with big CEOs, with COOs, with CFOs, with all these people, with venture capitalist funds. Actually, a lot of business is done through this lens. They mm -hmm. just never have connected it to their own body. They connected to health, uh, sorry, to business, but they don't, and making decisions in business, but they don't connect it to something beyond that. And I think mm. that's where that idea of universal intelligence comes in, yeah. you know, that it's, it's not just a decision in business. It's a decision that's through, throughout your life. That's throughout everyone's life. That's throughout your community. That's throughout your country. That's throughout everything. Um, and so really, the biggest thing that changed for me, Sam, I think, is that my relationship with that philosophy changed where it didn't become something that was just limited to when I was in the chiropractic practice. It wasn't just chiropractic philosophy. It was a philosophy of life and living. And that's when it opened doors and doors and doors and lots of lots of success and different avenues and everything else. And so it became more like rather than a part time girlfriend or boyfriend that I had, it became like a serious relationship in my life. Wow. So even when I'm not adjusting in the practice, it's still with me. It's still a relationship in my life. If I'm going to the cafe to have a coffee, it's still with me. I'm still married to that philosophy. If I'm having a meeting with another clean beauty uh, brand or a, a very not clean beauty retailer, that philosophy still sits with me and that's that's how i communicate with people that's everything it's wow. a major major relationship so then that's kind of where i suppose i was i just i'm so happy to hear this information because you know i honestly believe it's it can be a big fix for our industry and big fix for and this and this may innate summer is all about for the chiropractor and and like whether it's going to be a business conversation or whether it's going to be a philosophy conversation or it's going to be whatever it was going to be, the truth is, it's all the same conversation. It's like, if you can have a business hat with the lens of vitalism and with the lens of the philosophy of chiropractic, you can still talk about spreadsheets, budgets, planning, training, all that kind of stuff, but you're just doing it through what does your essence tell you and then make your right decisions through universal intelligence. So like can maybe on that, can you maybe just spend a bit of time for our audience, for the younger chiros out there? I'm going to say like, you know, for those people that want to give life a nudge and think, okay, what's the next step? What do you think that is going to be a vital message that we can partake or give to our um, attendees this year that you're going to be able to help them, yeah, help them by just listening to you in a few weeks' time? I, you know, it's a, that's an interesting question because I think everyone's journey is a little bit unique in how they can settle into that philosophy of life. Um But I think understanding that 
chiropractic philosophy, if you take the word chiropractic out of it and you speak about it from the lens of just anything in life, people are really turned on by it. Mm. Like people love it. Like people really, really, really love it. So I think people are scared to talk about it. They're talk- scared to talk about it with their friends or with their family or with other business associates or they think they can only do it in those four walls when they're doing an initial consult or a report of findings or a review visit. But this is something that like people are so attracted to it and when you're anchored in it and that's how you live your life, you're like a freaking magnet. It mm. just changes everything. And so the most important thing you can do is just like know that people want it. Take the kind of alienating stuff away from it and just talk about life in that way. And it's just like it comes to you. It just makes me think of a story where I first moved to Geelong. I actually was, you know, the big idealistic thinker and I was settled pretty strong in my philosophy. And the biggest industry here is cotton on. They have 1,600 employees at their head office and they've got nearly 3,500 that kind of at their headquarters and a bit like a pretty big industry. And then they've got, I think, 35,000 employees around the country. So like they're, they're one of the biggest ones. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to go in there I'll have a chat with cotton on. And uh, everyone's like every man and his dog and wants to be in cotton on. And so I just went straight through and had a chat with the, the bottom tier and the next tier and the next tier. And then I finally got a chance to go up the chain to one of the top executives and pretty much you can imagine they had their arms crossed, ready to go. And like, oh, who's this guy? I want to try and leverage off our brand. And I just went in there and had to chat. The guy had a couple of kids and he sat down. And I just pretty much said, look, I'm not here to tell you about how to use a fit ball or how to kind of fix a neck pain and back pain. The reason why we call the innate life the innate life is because, and just said, we believe in the body's inborn healing potential. You've got an amazing business here, but we believe that when you have that intuitive thoughts, you're going to be more creative. You're going to do this. And we want to try and help people understand just truly how amazing they are. And whatever I said at the time, the guy just unfolded. We had a good old chat. And then from there, it allowed me to run like four or five workshops. And I was kind of, I went up the chain in my first three or four months being in Geelong because I spoke vitalism and principles to the top end guy who pretty much had already decided he was going to get rid of me because he knew I was a chiropractor. But yeah, mm-hmm. then we had this great relationship because in a business setting, I spoke vitalism and philosophy and it opened up so many doors for me in a very much left brain world. So yeah, that just kind of sparked into my mind then about, yeah, business world, they do kind of want this and it is sexy. And then from that, there's got to be some kind of emoji out there that would kind of express the attractiveness of this. Um, <laughs> Uh, Sam, uh, Sam, sorry. what what's an appropriate emoji to use, and what's an appropriate emoji not to use? Just to give some context to all of you wonderful human beings out there, <laughs> Aaron and Lauren, before we started this, they could not believe that I sent an emoji to my team members that I thought was totally appropriate, but apparently I found out that it's not very appropriate. So... It was the eggplant. It was the eggplant. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it no, I didn't send the eggplant to anybody. <laughs> it was just the cheeky emoji that I think is funny. That's like, hey, I'm just joking. With like, it was like, this one. Yeah, that, that, one. Exactly, that one. But apparently, that's the. Anyway, that's uh, that can be the that can be the new vitalistic uh, <laughs> emoji for the world. I think it's quite cheeky and quite out there. But you're saying it's not. So anyway, we digress a little bit, Erin. <laughs> So uh, maybe leave a note in the comments. If you think that that cheeky emoji where they kind of go, well, how will you do it? Like one <laughs> blinking the tongue out. I don't think that's that um, inappropriate to send to people to say we're having a bit of fun, to joking time. But if you think it is a um, maybe a flirting emoji, please let me know because I'm doing a survey. I reckon the girls are wrong. I reckon I'm right. It's not a flirting emoji. Anyway, we digress. Um, <laughs> We digress. Let's go back to it. Um, <laughs> I'm not even sure where we were. <laughs> hey, I would, I would actually like to say also, Sam, the other beautiful thing that's happened since I have learned to live life through the chiropractic philosophy that's really just the life philosophy, mm-hmm. um, not only have lots of other doors open for me, but I am so in love with chiropractic. It's not funny. It's like become... I was already in love with it, but I'm even more in love with it than ever before. And I've missed it so much the past two years that I'm actually opening a new practice. Right what? Now. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Holy shit. That is so, so cool. 
I mean, thank you. I'm also kind of crazy. I don't know how I'm going to do everything. But in saying that, it was just like part of me was missing. It was amazing two years. I got to travel. I missed all the lockdowns. I had really great time. Um, But there was a little piece of me inside that wasn't quite right. And so I figured out it was that I wasn't able to put my hands on people I wasn't able to share that gift of connection with them and I wasn't able to kind of allow them to access something greater for themselves. So wow. and I'm really to, excited to be going back into that. You are an amazing human being. And I just want to kind of, I suppose, um, mention just some of the accolades that Erin's done. And she's too humble and too polite to say this, but she started and she lived with, um, oh, sorry, started work with Taylor Va- Vag, Varg over in WA, learned a lot of their philosophy and adjusting skills from there and got a very busy level at that stage. And there's certain levels of quoting and numbers and that kind of stuff. But I can say Erin can definitely adjust well into the 150, 200, 250 clients quite comfortably. Then went to Europe for 10 years and did the same thing, adjusting well. Well, I'm assuming Erin well and in the 200 mark for adjustments in a certain period of time. Came back and started her own business, same thing again. So Erin's not one to kind of go there and just dabble in that. In the Australian average is like 50 adjustments a week. Erin's doing four or five times that, you know, and she's uh, absolutely a rock star by herself, kicking ass in, in those areas. And not, not only that, you did a lot of that without a CA and you had a very smooth, clean practice for a long time. Then you finally got a CA, but one CA. And how much, what was the square meterage of, square meterage of Live Love Life? Uh, when I moved to the big space, it was 35 square meters. <laughs> yeah. So talk about efficiencies, 35 square meters and adjusting 200 plus people every week in a small area and did that in a very short amount of time. Then decides to pack it all Two up. Two and a half and then... days a week. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm saying here, people, is that what I love the most is that Aaron, the birth of Aaron came from the innate summit to come or from the innate summit in Cairo, Europe, but she's always been kind of you know, tinkering and in love with the philosophy and the profession. And then not only that, we've mentioned she's got a pretty rocking business, seven figure, seven figure company. We haven't told you what figures at the front of that seven figures. I'm just saying like, she's a serious big rock star and she's an asset to our profession. She's a, she's just a wonderful human being. She loves a glass of wine and she's an absolute legend in general. So, um, I can't wait to have you. I mean, literally it's going to be like not Aaron 2.0 or not even Aaron 5.0. It's like going to be Aaron, like I'm even sure, but seriously big exponential growth as a human being and as just as a general energetic human, you've grown so much and I'm just so inspired and proud to be your friend and also see how far you've come in a short amount of time. So uh, we love you to bits. Oh, I can't wait to uh, to have you up in the, um, up in, up in, what's it, the Kingscliff? Kingscliff. I keep wanting to say Gold Coast, but I, I get told off the other time. It's, it's a hard Whole different to state, Sammy. I oh, know. I've been told off that. See, I've been getting told off everyone. Emojis and what state we're going to. <laughs> That's why the United States, we just lose the kind of vibe of, of vitalism and and, <laughs> and, and uh, just things can not be left brain. They're all kind of right brain. Um, the last thing is you've also been involved with Syntropy and I know it's a big factor. So a lot of you do know what that is. Syntropy is the adjusting side of things. And with Pat and Aaron doing an amazing job teaching Kairos how to adjust and being in the... Um, being dropped in, which is, I know your big logo or big, um, I suppose, call to action. So tell us a bit about that. Um, that has been probably the next phase of my evolution as um, a chiropractor and as a person um, working. I met Patrick and Aaron at Cairo Europe about 10 years ago and um, just watching them adjusting. Wow. Like, wow, it was so beautiful to watch. It was so graceful and so artful and there was ease in their body and there was ease in the person on the table and the person would get up and there was love between them. It was this whole other thing that I kind of, I was already in love with chiropractic, but I watched that and I thought, I I have to learn to be able to adjust and deliver the goods like this. And I realised like so much of my energy had been leached through inefficient adjusting. So much of my passion for my practice was leached through not being able to give people what I really wanted to give them. Um, But then it slowed me down so much. If I couldn't, you know, adjust someone uh, or if I couldn't get an adjustment or then I felt like I had to maybe do something else. Maybe I had to do some soft tissue or give them some stretches if I hadn't been able to make the adjustment work, you know. Yeah. And so I met Patrick and Aaron and I was like, I, I want to do this and we have to do it in Australia. And so I helped them bring the seminar down to Australia. We've been doing that now for 
uh, four years mm. we've been holding Syntropy. Even through COVID, we did the virtual seminars, which was uh, crazy and awesome at the same point in time. Um, but really being able to step up my game in terms of my skill, being able to adjust with ease and grace, being confident when I step up to the table that I can adjust anyone, anytime, mm -hmm. um, and really doing it from that place of being just super dropped into myself and into them. It's made practice a breeze. It's increased my confidence. Um, and it's, again, increased my love of chiropractic. It's such a beautiful art. It's yeah. so, so, so beautiful when you watch a truly great, masterful adjuster. Yep. It's just so sweet. So love sweet. That. Love it. So, um, yeah, we'll be there. And then we have some more Centropy seminars coming up in February next year. We just held sold out events in Perth and also in Melbourne. Yeah, um, and next year me. we'll be Perth and Gold Coast, okay. actual Gold Coast, not Kingscliff. <laughs> Thank you very much, Darren. I really appreciate that little, uh, little kick in the teeth. Uh, we actually uh, haven't found a venue yet, so <laughs> it might actually be King's Cliff. Who knows? All right. Well done. Well, look, Aaron. I'm going to say it again. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thanks for obviously bringing your wonderful energy and just your wisdom as well. So um, I really, really am excited about hearing your message this year from the Innate Summit. And also, I'm just excited for you mentioned to you to, at the start of this interview that just learning how to say yes. So you said yes to me to speak down at summit in 2015. And you said yes, to, I'm guessing, to Fleur to kind of kind of start another company. You said yes to yourself to to read more books and get involved. So you've done some pretty amazing chances to say yes. And then it actually makes me think of a parallel with Olivia Peacock, who um, spoke last year on stage. And she's a, a new graduate, pretty much only my first year out. But her message, the same thing, was just saying yes. And so for young, so a lot of the, the you know, young female chiropractors out there or even um, young male corporate is out there or the ones in student clinic now where if you just step, almost step through and yeah. say yes to the yeah. next level of growth and if you feel uncomfortable and the butterflies are in your belly and the butterflies grow to say into bats in your belly and then the bats go to dragons in your belly, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to explode from the inside out. Like just by saying yes, look how far you've come. And that's kind of what I'm excited to see what the next level of yes is. Yeah. For you. yeah thanks, Sam. And to, to all those people out there, you, who are scared of saying yes, know that we're all scared of saying mm. yes. I'm still scared of saying yes. That's normal. But unless you say yes, nothing changes. Yeah. So you've just got to take that little step, be a little bit out of your comfort zone, say yes, and the whole world starts opening up to you. Beautiful. And it's kind of, it's, yeah, I love that. And it's one of those, it's been around for many years, take a risk or look outside the box or you know, just by saying yes, all of a similar kind of metaphor, but you know, you can see some pretty big changes in your world when you do say yes. So thank you, Aaron, for saying yes for this interview, for saying yes to speak at the Innate Summit and for being a true rock star. We love you. We think you're incredible. And I really am so inspired by what you have achieved. And I can't wait to have you at our stage soon. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much, Sammy. Can't wait to see you all there. See you guys and be ready. It's exciting. May's only a few, a few months away. <laughs>